Hello, and welcome to this special episode of 3D Drawing for Your Model Railway. Uh, the purpose of this episode is to, the, to announce the next big project that I'm, I'm going to undertake and I'm going to show on the channel. Um, for those people that know me, I've got two layouts, um, both set in Enga British Engage. Um, what the smallest of the two layouts is based on Hiver Green pre-assembly depot. Um, it's a small yard. Um, where engineers wagons are shunted around and assembled into trains ready to go to engineering works. The other layout that I've got um, is currently based in the loft but it is being constructed to um, be portable so I can take it to exhibitions. Um, that's an engaged version of Tunbridge West Yard. Um, both of these layouts have two things in have one thing in common really um, and that is that they're there primarily for departmental workings. Um, now, my enjoyment in modelling is wagons and on track plant. So, uh, the, obviously, in Engage, in British Engage, there's very little track plant available, um, and the wagons that are available are either kits or, or pretty much all, all of the same thing, um, which is one of the main reasons why I got into 3D printing. Um, so, without further ado, let's have a look at what we're going to be building over the next few months. Um, it's going to be quite a long project, um, but hopefully if you'll follow along, you will be amazed at what we'll be able to achieve and hopefully you'll be quite pleased with um, the outcome. As you can see in this picture, the project that we're going to be looking to do over the, the next few weeks, maybe months, is a Cowan shielding. 30 tonne diesel mechanical crane. These cranes were part of an order of 22. There was 12 75 tonne cranes and 10 30 tonne cranes. Um, initially the, the order was for them to all become steam cranes um, but the decision was made that two of the 75 tonne cranes and two of the 30 tonne cranes would become diesel mechanical and they would uh, all four of those would be based in the southern region. Um, so the model we're looking at is going to be the 30 tonne crane. Um, the total um, cost of the order for British Rail was slightly over £1 million um, pounds back in the uh, back in 1960s. Um, the diesel mechanical crane um, had a Rolls-Royce C4 NFL four-cylinder um, diesel mechanical engine fitted. Um, the two 30 ton cranes um, were initially numbered 965 183 and 184 and then subsequently they were numbered to 96 100 and 96 101 they were both built in 1962 and both of them were also withdrawn in 1996 96 100 um, had an initial allocation at felton and then moved to clapham junction in 1970 and then in 1980 was moved to Horsham and 96101 its initial allocation was Bournemouth and then moved to Eastleigh in 1969 and then that also moved to Horsham in 1980. Um, the Horsham depot um, was primarily for electrification works within the southern region and these two cranes um, were used for uh, moving and installing transformers and substation parts. Um, they were, as I say they were both withdrawn in 1996 and I believe now that 96100 was moved um, to Carnforth. Um, I haven't got any um, confirmation of that. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks and months and we're going to break this model down and it's going to take several episodes to do. Um, so let's look at a little bit more detail about what we're going to be looking at as the crane, how I'm going to tackle each part of the crane. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is thank Paul Wade for allowing me to use the photos um, that he's given me and supplied me to be able to use them in the video. Um, I've got about two dozen photos of the pair of these cranes from both sides, various different angles. I've also got scale plans. Um, so we're going to be working from all of those. 
Um, now, if we look at this this side of the crane, particularly, we're going to be splitting the crane into multiple components. Um, the first component we look at is the body, the main body in the cab section. Um, this part will be hollow because we've got glazing in here. I want to have it hollow so that you can get inside and put your glazing internally. Um, the window probably will be quite small, so there is a possibility that we'll be able to just use some of that glaze glue um, from uh, Deluxe Innovations. Um, but I'm gonna, uh, initially, we're going to make it hollow. Um, so that'll be the first component. Second component will be a plate that sits underneath with a pivot that comes down that will go into the chassis to enable this to, to rotate and pivot as it goes around corners. That's most likely going to have this gear attached to it, although that gear may end up being attached to the chassis. It just depends on um, how tests work. Um, obviously, I've not printed this, I've not designed this yet, so this is going to be initially just a drawing, and then that will then go through a testing phase to see what we can achieve with it. So that's the first two parts. The next part is going to be the chassis. Now, if you look at the, the underframe of the chassis here, this is obviously one massive big lump here. But underneath, we've got the first three axles here are solid and rigid to the frame. And then the last two are part of a bogey. Um, now, I'm going to be drawing these in N British N gauge. Um, and how well five axles that close to each other will cope going around uh, N gauge track is to be seen. Um, so initially, we are going to draw it as three rigid and a bogey. Um, but I already have some plans that potentially it will end up being a bogey plus the outer two here with a fake inner wheel. Um, and if that potentially can't work, then what we may have to do is just make it all rigid all the way along. And then have the three inner axles as fake. But that will be an absolute last resort. Um, it just depends on how, how it comes together. Uh, the next component we'll look at will be the jib of the crane. Um, obviously it's got to be a separate part because it needs to pivot up and down independently. And then we'll also have the runner. Both of these two cranes had runner to similar designs. Um, so we'll be drawing this up as a separate component. Um, actually this, this one should be pretty straightforward. Um, but there is quite a lot going on underneath and we'll try and add as much of this detail as possible. Some things like the uh, steps here, they may be, I'm probably going to leave these off and just use etches for them uh, because that will also give a better result. Um, the cabling here that's used to pivot the jib here, I'm not going to draw these on. Um, I'll probably be using something like a fishing wire or a small thread afterwards to be able to, to complete these. Um, so yeah, that's how we're going to break this model down. Um, as I say, we're going to initially draw it and then we'll print, I'm going to print the parts off and then see how, how they come out initially and then whether any amendments need to be made um, to either size, scale or to, a, to enable it to print better and to run better. Um, so hopefully that's going to be quite a good project for us all to get our teeth into. Um, if, if you want to, to follow this project along, please leave comments below, like the, the videos and make sure you subscribe to keep getting each episode as I put them up. Um, I say it's going to be going over a few weeks and hopefully this will be something that primarily the British Engage um, fraternity will really be after because really there is no cranes available um, that are prototypical in Engage. Um, but also because just because I'm drawing it in Engage doesn't mean that it can't be scaled up and printed in, in some of the larger scales. Um, although to be printing something this large in double O, you're probably going to need quite a large printer rather than just what I've got with a little photon. Um, I, there is a possibility that I could do it on the photon, but it may mean that I have to break um, parts into separate, uh, something like the jib would be up being quite large, so I might have to split that down the middle and then print that as two separate parts. Um, so yeah, if, if you're interested in following this along, as I say, please hit the subscribe button and the notification, and hopefully you'll enjoy it.
Thanks for watching.